Hello my lovelies, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be checking out the fresh new ASUS Pro Duo Lap Pro 14 Duo. ASUS ZenBook Pro 14 Duo OLED 2023. Bit of a mouthful. And this fresh new Duo once again sports a secondary screen for all of your multitasking shenanigans. Got some beefy performance thanks to the 13th gen Intel action and a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU. So it sounds ideal if you're a creator, and if those creative juices are running a bit dry, well, no worries, you can just kick back with some gaming instead. I've been using the Izu ZenBook Pro yada yada for over a week now, so here's my review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, the ZenBook Pro 14 Duo looks and feels very similar to last year's model. It's certainly got a premium vibe to it, as you would expect at this sort of price point. Fold it on up and it's not too chunky. 1.75 kilos, it's got a bit of a heft to it for sure, but certainly more than transportable. And then when you pop that lid, that secondary display just raises up. This mechanism feels really, really solid, doesn't feel flimsy in any way, so hopefully should be durable enough to last you years. And the all metal chassis feels just as solid. The ZenBook Pro 14 Duo has passed a whole bunch of military standard A10H tests. So it should be able to put up with a good bit of vibration, the odd bang and knock. Pretty moist conditions too. It's pretty smart, if not exactly thrilling design for that lid. The ZenBook Pro 14 Duo just comes in this one singular color, black. Got a very subtle circular pattern emanating out from the logo. But as you can see there, the lid does get quite smudgy, so you will have to give it a good buffing to keep it looking smart. As for the connectivity, well, here on the right edge of the ZenBook Pro 14 Duo, you can see you've got a single type A USB 3.2 port and dual Thunderbolt 4 ports. And those are all of the USB ports on offer here on this laptop, so it's not a bad number, but I would have preferred them to be a bit more spread out at least. Over on the other side, you've just got a vent and a headphone jack, and then the rest of the ports are around back, though basically all we're dealing with here is an HDMI 2.1 port and a micro SD memory card slot. Now one of the highlights, certainly if you're a creator, is that display tech. The main screen is a 14.5 inch OLED panel, Pretty weenie bezels surrounding it as well, it does mostly fill the inside of that lid. You got a 2880 by 1800 pixel resolution, so nice crisp visuals. And because it's an OLED panel, HDR content looks stunning. Deep blacks, crisp clean whites. And you've got an impressive color range on here as well. You've got 100% of coverage of the sRGB and P3 gamuts, 95% of the Adobe RGB. So if you're editing photos and whatnot, then basically what you see is what you get. View and angles nice and wide, not much distortion as you move away from that central position. And on the maxed out brightness, I found that the ZenBook Pro 14 Duo was just about bright enough to use outdoors, even on a very sunshiny day. You're certainly best off finding some shade, especially as you've got a glossy finish here. But I certainly found it was a more powerful panel than my MacBook Pro. The refresh rate maxes out at 120Hz, and that primary display is a touchscreen panel as well, so you can move your stuff around. Ooh, shift it down to that secondary display if you want. Now, of course, this secondary 12.7-inch IPS touchscreen panel is the USP of the ZenBook Pro 14 Duo. You can quickly toggle it on and off just with a quick tap of this button up here. This can either hide it, or you can actually completely switch it off if you want to preserve power. If you do knock it off, then any apps that were on that secondary panel then pop up onto your primary screen. And then if you turn the second screen back on again, then they do pop back down there. This second screen sports a 2880 by 864 pixel resolution, so just as sharp as the main panel. And having this second screen with you wherever you go just really opens up so many options. It's so useful. Even if you're just using it to catch up with a bit of Uncle Spurt action while you're getting on with some work or browsing your emails or whatever. You can have a couple of apps comfortably running down here side by side thanks to that stretched aspect ratio. I mean, you can even use that second screen to browse a walkthrough as you're gaming. And you'll see over here on the left edge of that second screen, you've got a mini control panel. This can be used to quickly tweak the brightness of that second screen, very handy. And if for whatever reason you need a clearer view of what's going on down here, you can quickly swap those apps on the secondary screen up to the primary screen. And if you need a bit of privacy, you've also got toggles for both the camera and the mic. Now you can actually customise this layout if you want to, but I find it worked pretty well with these options. You've also got custom control over Adobe's Creative Suite, which would be pretty handy if you actually used Adobe's Creative Suite. I unfortunately don't, so I can't really comment on that. And unlike that main screen, you do actually have an anti-glare finish here on the secondary IPS panel, which is really handy, as it's usually perfectly angled to reflect whatever ceiling light action you've got going on. 
As for the speakers, well they've apparently been fine-tuned by Omak Godot. And they're located underneath the laptop, but also the audio appears to be beamed out from beneath the secondary display. The clarity isn't the greatest, I certainly wouldn't suggest listening to music via the speakers, but that audio is absolutely fine for just watching some Netflix or YouTube or doing a bit of the online video chats, even if you're in a fairly noisy environment. So the ZenBook Pro 14 Duo perfectly set up for creators, but of course it's not much use for those creative tasks if the performance is crap. Thankfully though, that's not the case. This laptop is powered by a 13th gen Intel processor, as you would expect. It's the Core i9-13900H stuffed inside of my review unit. And we've also got a maxed out 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. This Core i9 model also comes with a choice of dedicated GPU, RTX 3050, 4050 or 4060. And this almighty sod is the 4050 model, so it's certainly got some grunt in the old graphics department. So certainly if you are a creator, you shouldn't worry about getting a hefty bit of editing on the go while you're on the move. If you're into your benchmarking, well Geekbench churned out a single core score of 2,586, multi-core score of 12,400. Cinebench managed almost 2,000 single core and 12,700 multi-core. And some pretty strong results from 3D Mark as well. TimeSpy recorded a score of 7,400-ish every time I ran it. And meanwhile, the CPU profile have returned a score of 7,500-ish with all threads running full pelt. And that basically all just confirmed exactly what I already knew from using it as my laptop for a week. It's a very capable multitasker and can run those more hefty memory sapping apps, no worries. And to prove just how beefy the Izu ZenBook Pro 14 Duo OLED was, I even smashed through a good bit of Returnal in my spare time. Admittedly on low to medium detail settings, but Returnal is a real git to get running on many laptops and the ZenBook did not struggle one bit. The frame rate stayed stable, even when I was gaming for a good long while, the cooling system coped with it admirably, while also remaining pretty damn quiet. We're not talking whisper quiet like a MacBook Pro, but considering this thing's got a dedicated GPU stuffed inside, it's pretty impressive. Now, unfortunately, one victim of this secondary display is the chiclet keyboard, which has been squished down into this bottom half of the laptop. It's not a bad size by any means, I've certainly used worse, but there's absolutely no room as you can see for a wrist rest, so unless you're resting on a desk or something, the typing experience is rather awkward. And indeed the keyboard is even further squished because you've got the touchpad crammed in over here on the right edge. Not only is this ridiculously weeny as you can see there, but also I found I kept tapping the end key whenever I wanted to do the old left click. Like I'm right handed and I struggle to use this thing, so God even knows what a lefty will think of it. So yeah, if you're using the ZenBook on a desk, you'll definitely want to hook up a mouse or something. Apart from being super compressed, that keyboard's absolutely fine though. It's a nice firm type in action, reasonable amount of travel. And if you do find yourself doing a lot of Microsoft Teams and Skyping and Zooming these days, and that's fair, so who frickin' doesn't, you've got a Full HD webcam housed just above that glorious OLED panel. And this does a pretty decent job for your online video chats. And with my review model, you got built-in IR support as well, so you can actually use that webcam to unlock the laptop using your face. It was super nippy there. It's not always that quick, I've got to say. Sometimes it takes a wee while. No worries on the storage front. The ZenBook Pro Duo OLED, I've already forgotten the friggin' name of it, supports up to two terabytes of storage via an NVMe SSD. That's proved reasonably nippy in my tests, around six gigabits per second read speeds and roughly half that for write. So file transfers are pretty quick. And you've got that micro SD memory card support as well if you want to quickly swap files from a camera for instance. Again, great news for creators. I found the battery life was pretty decent on this Asus laptop as well. I tended to get around five to six hours of full-on use from a single charge. And that's with both panels active as well, so pretty good. Although not quite good enough to last you a full working day. And thankfully you can power it up using those USB-C Thunderbolt ports as well so you don't have to lug the adapter around if you've got an alternative option. And that in a nutshell, my lovelies, is the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo 4... Uh, the Asus ZenBook Pro 14 Duo OLED. God, God damn it, Asus. Sort it out. Certainly a solid option if you are a creator with that dual display setup. Beefy performance, respectable battery life, etc. It's really only the keyboard and the touchpad arrangement down here that I wasn't a massive fan of. Anywho, that's what I think. It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug, subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.